Today we are at Maypol and we get to talk PCD. Now if you don't know what PCD is, you're about to learn from some of the best and certainly one of the best guys I've ever met on the subject itself. Here at Maypol, you guys are a bit unique in how you do things because it is about precision. It is about oftentimes that low volume that really helps a customer do multiple operations within one tool and save a ton of money. So when we talk PCD, what are we talking about here? So BCD is a uh, polycrystallized diamond, but it's a very hard material. And, um, but we use BCD, especially in automotive, to cut aluminum. Um, and we use very, very tight tolerances. And the only way we can do that is with the technology and equipment and uh, support that we have around the world to, to make great tools like we do here. Yeah, let's talk about that support around the world because I know the globalization of what Maypal has done is important to you and important to how you're creating everything here. Before we get into specials, the, the globalization is so important of what you've done. Right, yeah, so we're, we are considered a competent center, but we rely on competent centers all over the world. Um, to We collaborate with them and we try to use the same machinery, the same program strategies, and also the same cutting technology so that you know, we're making a consistently great tool for our customers, no matter where they order it, all around the world. Yeah, and that's super important to understand, I think, because there are a lot of difficulties and there are a lot of strategies, and you're able to go in and help support kind of the combination of a strategy with a difficulty and make it better in so many different ways. Now, I'm being a bit vague in how I'm describing this, but we're gonna give us, get a bit more specific in just a second. So let's talk about your customization and what goes into that process. Yeah, so we, you know, a lot of our tools are designed and made and they work perfect, but when you're talking about dealing with microns, splitting hairs like we do, you know, um, there's a lot of tweaking that you have to do. So we really pride ourselves on, on, on communicating with the customer, with the engineering, and also our um, engineers in Germany and, and optimizing a tool to make it even better for the customer for what they need. Yeah, very well said. Let's start to take a little walk because when we talk about customization, you're talking about two, three, four, five pieces. You're not talking about hundreds or even dozens. It's just a couple of small operations that truly are focused on the client. And our viewers love to see specific ideas as well. We have something here. I'd love for you to describe for the audience what they're looking at and how it's helped that customer. So yeah, we have a very, um, very special, um, we call it a uh, wagon wheel tool, but is a, uh, it's cutting a, a mill, it's milling a form into a part for a customer. Um, it's got 16 teeth on the top and 16 teeth on the bottom. Um, and the customer, it worked really well for the customer. They were satisfied, but we weren't satisfied. So we've actually optimized chip splitters on that. When we very first did it, we turned that around within just a few days, got it out of the customer, and they were happy and, and thrilled with how much better the tool cut, how much freer it cut, and how much more tool life they got after this. He, I have to smile, and I'm smiling because you said the customer was satisfied, but we were not. That's you right. said we got to do more. Yeah, that's what separates us. I would say that is what separates you, but not only does that separate you, we actually have another machine we're going to look at yeah. that does a bit more of that separation and allows us to understand some more of these processes as well, doesn't it? Right. Let's go take a look. All right. All right, my friends, we're with the MQL area now, but I got Heath here to let us all know kind of what that stands for and what this machines can do. Yeah, so MQL is it's kind of a rarity in this field, but a lot of people are using it, but MQL stands for minimum quantity lubricant. So what that means is instead of a flood coolant, which is I'd say 95% of the people use, it's just a flood power coolant. Um, this is a mix between a fine oil and air and you're mixing that and you're um, making basically a fine mist. So the benefits of that is, is um, cost effective and it's better for the environment. The challenge of that is the coolant holes can't just be open. With a flood coolant, it's like coolant holes are open, we're good to go. With MQL, it's the coolant holes have to be precisely the right angle, precisely the right diameter. Everything has to be perfect for the MQL to work perfectly. And that's the difference in it working, burning a machine up, breaking the tool on the first go, or having a successful part. And so at Maypole, we have the ability, which is, I don't, I can't tell you a lot of people that have it. I know we're one of the rare people that has this machine. And we can actually test the MQL tool 
and evaluate it and see if we can make it better before we actually get the tool to the customer. Be too late if they got it and it wasn't tested, wouldn't it? Exactly. But that happens a lot, I'm sure, that's, as well. That's correct. And you're right, about 95% flood coolant, that's how it works. Turn up your PSI, make sure for the smaller diameters it gets through there, you're right. Yeah. But this sounds interesting. Are we able to watch how this works? Yeah. Can I you can, turn this I, on for us? Yeah, I can show you, show you how it works. I would love to see more of this. All right, let's do it. And along the way, Heath, would you mind describing kind of the process of what's going on so everyone who's watching can hear your amazing voice? Yeah. <laughs> You're a singer too, right? <laughs> no, my <laughs> wife is, not me. <laughs> um, so, so what we're doing here is the first, first thing it's doing is getting the, the oil going so it's not sitting. So now it's fresh and ready to go. And we actually use a, a, a background for it to spray. So now we're spraying two different holes, and the idea is that the front hole and the back hole on both flutes uh, push out the same amount of coolant equally. And how can you tell, Heath, from looking at this? Now you're looking at the size, the size of the uh, the wet spot. Uh, I don't really know a better word that, but the wet spot on it the piece of paper. It works for me, buddy. <laughs> and so you can see they're relatively the same size. So now if we had if we had bad MQL. If one was a dime and one was a quarter, we knew we were getting something yes. wrong. Yeah, something's wrong. So that means you'd have all your coolant spitting out on one end, and then you're struggling on on the in, on the back of the tool. And then you know you probably have a great surface finish on the front end, bad surface finish on the uh, on the second board. So I think you said this already, but I just kind of want to reiterate. This testing shows that it's doing making the right amount of spray, right? And the negative to not understanding that is broken tools, bad parts. I guess everything that goes on to anyone who utilizes this style of coolant, which 5%, 10%, I mean. Yeah, I would say for the, the customers, that sit, we see probably 5 to 10% um, that use this MQL style. And the problem is, is because it is a challenge, but we're, you know, we have the capabilities to. That's actually to what I want to talk yeah. about a little bit, Heath, is, is this thing is done running now, this MQL, is if people could utilize it more if people knew about it more would this be more of a go-to than it is now compared to the 95 percent of that standard coolant through tool coolant tool yeah uh, flooding yeah i believe so and especially you know kind of how the world's moving everybody first of all wants to save money but they also want to be conscious of the environment and so this is a great solution and you know not only for our tools but we've actually had other people's tools that have been struggling with MQL, we bring it in, test it, we can evaluate it and, and, and fix that. And those are the two big board. wins, right? Is yeah. environment and saving money. Correct. Perfect. Heath, you're amazing. Your time has been amazing. Appreciate Thank you for it. explaining that because yeah. you're right, MQL is something new for me, you new for a lot of other folks out there. But if you're interested in learning more from Heath, reach out to my Paul. They're happy to help you. And this is that specialty customization that can change the way you do things within your shop. If you want to get creative, get creative with these guys. They'll help you figure it out, right? That's right. <laughs> I like it. All right, my friends, thank you all for watching. We'll see you again soon. Hold on, hold on, where are you going? We're not done yet. Heath and I are liking this too much and we got a measuring system that you have to take a look at for those microns and sub-microns. We're not just splitting hairs, you're splitting atoms when you get into the microns world. So Heath, what are we looking at here and how can it help the people out there? So this is a uh, Unimess machine. It's actually a Maypal made machine that we sell to customers and we also use in production. Um, and the best way I can explain this machine is we have advanced a lot in optically measuring tools. We have a great optically measuring tool. Maypal even ma makes machines that optically measure tools with a camera. But to get the most accurate tool, the most accurate diameter, especially when we're literally splitting ha hairs out here, minus three microns, you have to still physically touch the tool. Um, so we actually use a diamond probe and physically measure the tool. For PCD, we use a probe. It's almost like if you're running carbide tools, you'd use a mic. And that's, you trust the mic more than any other piece of equipment. So we trust this machine more than any other piece of equipment for accuracy ever. That's perfect, Heath. Now, are we actually done this time or are we gonna surprise them with something else? I don't know. We'll see how much time we get. We are enjoying this, aren't we? We are. <laughs> all right. Thank you all for watching. Hope you got that last scene right there because absolutely worth it. This is how you make sure that you're making all the right cuts that you need to make, that you have the micron precision that Maple guarantees that you will have. Heath, again, appreciate you, brother. Yeah. All right. One more thing. I'm just kidding. <laughs>